Kalo Mina, and welcome to the Quest for Prometheus. We're coming to you from Porphyria Foundation's Hellenic History Series. I'm Billy Krizahos. And I be George Selinski. So we try to always bring you something from uh, Greece's ancient heritage, but it doesn't always fit neatly into months because dates are a little iffy when we go really far back in history. And Billy, like I've told you many times before, it's uh, nice to have a history that goes that far back. That's very true. Uh, so, uh, but that does mean that we do occasionally have a problem pinpointing an exact month, even in many cases, even years uh, are under question by historians. So let's. Uh, we want to highlight something that I think uh, is a very special moment, probably one of the most favorite moments in um, ancient Hellenic thought. And uh, we're going to talk about Plato's analogy of the cave. Right. It's a very deep thing. And uh, I think it's, uh, I've mentioned it to, um, every time I've mentioned it to Greeks, it's always a, you know, you, you feel something in them uh, when, when you talk about it, because it's such a deep, uh, a deep thing that has inspired so much thought and, and just illustrated so much about how our world actually works. It always ties into our show, The Quest for Prometheus, the search right. for truth and knowledge. In our show, it's modern politics and history, but uh, Plato's analogy of the cave is the, the quest for knowledge and um, seeking truth and um, finding, I guess, uh, some justice you know, in society. So... Let's just kind of quickly uh, talk about Plato's cave analogy. It's uh, it was written, um, you know, it was inspired very much by Socrates. Yes, and uh, you know, Socrates didn't believe in writing, uh, but uh, thank God his students did, and uh, and Plato did. So we actually have this, uh, you know. But Plato, Plato basically put these very interesting thoughts forward about a society where people have not been slaves from their very birth, but very early on in childhood. And they've been uh, living inside of this deep cave. And inside of this deep cave, everybody is sitting, facing in one direction and looking at a wall. And uh, they see something on that wall, and those are the shadows of various objects, creatures, and whatever. But they never actually see that there are people who are actually conveying these objects, because those people are... So let's see, let's imagine for yes. a moment these people are sitting here, chained and looking at a wall. They can only see basically uh, straight ahead, right? And they time. they see shadows on this wall. So it's like a projector in back of them. And of course, back then this is before uh, projectors. So what they had was what what Plato describes as a, a fire behind and um, and and right in between the fire and these people who are facing away from the fire who are facing the wall. We have. Um, uh, kind of a, a bit of a screen and people who are walking with various objects and and uh, back and forth and they hear also the voices of these people echoed in uh, and, and so all these people they're watching are shadows and echoes of voices and they're hearing these echoes of voices and they start thinking of things they, they start forming impressions of things yes and then there is that great moment where one of them breaks free all of a sudden turns around and sees the fire for the first time and all of these, uh, all of these, uh, you know, what's actually going on. So, Billy, take it from there. What happens to this person? Well, this first uh, person is blinded by the fire and uh, basically immediately then, you know, decides to turn back and look away again uh, because it was too bright for him and, and he couldn't stand the pain. Uh, and then there's also two tiers, two levels, right, of, of people that are sort of imprisoned in this cave. Uh, and then there's, a, there's another person that is led, f led free from somebody. Uh, they take him up to the top of the cave and outside into the world, and he gets to look at the sun. Now the sun is, you know, is, is blazing hot, and he's also blinded, and it hurts him so much, and he, he, he basically almost decides to go back, but he, he sticks around, and then... Uh, sees the sun. I mean, that's uh, kind of like a. This is like the short analogy of the, of the cave. Uh, so what what we're learning is that the certain people that live their lives, uh, as Plato was uh, uh, basically analyzing what Socrates was saying, that they only see certain things, certain um, what do you call it, a certain way of life, right? And they don't right. see the the whole truth behind what's what's happening around them. 
And just the impression that they're being passed that's being passed on to them essentially. That's right. And and fire of course represents, you know, knowledge and truth, but it depends how you view this fire and, and how you, you react to it as well. You can't directly look into the sun or the fire because you will you know, your eyes will get burned. You have to that's knowledge and you have to slowly accept it. And some people do not accept the knowledge. You know, the first one that, that had the fire and saw the light, he ran back, he didn't want it. He went to what he was comfortable with. Yes, yes. And that's a very, I think that's really kind of the crux of it, that truth, you know, I think one of the things that a lot of people go through when they grow up is initially when we're younger, we think that the right thing to do is just you tell somebody the truth, you give them all the facts, and then, of course, they're going to have to agree with you, right? <laughs> uh, but we know that that's actually, as we get older, we understand that's not how people work. People actually often believe what they want to believe. And whenever they're confronted with very unpleasant facts, they end up having to uh, make a decision whether they're willing to go through that pain of adjusting to that or if they're going to go back to what comfortable truths they're used to. So that's to me, that's basically what Plato is trying to say here. Uh, and uh, that's kind of what I mean. We're all about educating and, and everything, and we're all about getting uh, getting uh, people to hopefully try to see uh, see the truth. And uh, it's just not an easy process, including for all, everybody. Obviously, us as well. We are always in a process of constant learning and uh, and adapting to uh, to a reality. Right. That's right. That's right. Some people do not accept the truth and do not acknowledge it, and they go back into the, their beliefs and what they believed prior to. Uh, seeing something new or hearing something new and some people take a long time to accept it, but eventually do uh, And then you have people in between so Plato being one of the top three philosophers of Greece in the ancient world and of all time You know you have Socrates who didn't write anything. It was uh, from the oral uh, Dialogues that uh, his students wrote down Plato and then from Plato comes Aristotle who tutors Alexander the Great you know we have this this great story this great analogy that even the uh, the Christians and the Byzantines took uh, uh, the monastics and, uh, and the bishops and they, and they utilized it to analyze that the, later on in, in different eras, like the word of Christ became this knowledge. You know, in yes. ancient times they had an equivalent to that, you know, be the gods or being, you know, uh, you know writing and, and, and other type of information that was uh, available for the first time, you know, the sciences that they kind of started inventing and investigating science, mathematics. I was also knowledge by that. Yeah, and actually that's what Plato also, yeah. you know, he puts that forth as the argument about, you know, the sciences and everything. And because, uh, you know, philosophers, it was amazing. Back then you were a big multitasker. You could be a philosopher and a scientist. And a, and a and warrior. And they all fought front yes. line in the wars against the Persians. <laughs> now, of course, it's very difficult because we have such a large body of knowledge that you have to specialize in order to really, you know, be of any use kind of. But but very interesting people, very well-rounded people. And uh, But yes, I, I, I especially like the fact that you touch on the Christian message there because that's, uh, we have those same human dynamics in play when we're looking at the light and uh, it, and it's difficult for us to adjust, and then you know, and it's constantly the process. Plus, plus in George, life. Prometheus was the god that stole the light from, fire, from Zeus, the yeah, fire, the fire, fire right. which is you know yeah. the light and the knowledge that he gave to the humans. And Prometheus is a prototype of a messiah of, of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, we ha we kind of have that merging of of, of that. Uh, so that that is very important. And uh, just to mention again about Plato, his name means Platonas, white shoulders, very big guy. We just have images of him as as an, as an older man. As an older stoic, you know, like philosopher, but uh, well, philosophers what, are supposed to be old, yeah, <laughs> beard, wise, but, you know, and, uh, once yeah. upon a time he was young and big and strong. Now, in I have a personal attachment to also this, uh, this, this story of Plato because one of the songs I wrote for Porphyra's my band's first album called Shine was basically inspired by this, uh, the quest for knowledge. And uh, from what I remember, the lyrics go like this Counting shadows on the wall. Fire blazing from behind A shackled prisoner I am In a kingdom void of time I've been condemned to live alone Away from any kind of light I yearn for something for and more To have you here within my sight Shine, shine on me You beautiful place See right there, like Shine uh, uh, is inspired by Plato's analogy of the cave from the lyrics in the beginning, and also it inspired me to write Porphyra's uh, Grecian rock opera, which is the story of Anna 
Porfirio again and Vladimir the Great, Anna and Vladimir the Love the Rock the World. It's one of the the main scenes that uh, deals with uh, Plato's analogy of the cave and how Vladimir himself, uh, by accepting Christianity, you know, became uh, more knowledgeable and so the light. At that moment, it was as if God himself came down from the heavens and bestowed upon me a feeling most divine. This is a very important topic, and uh, you know, we can learn more about Plato in the near future too, as well. Absolutely, and the other philosophers. Mm -hmm.